the directory entry has one dirty bit that indicates that the block is dirty in some cache in the system. And for every cache in the system, the directory entry has one bit that indicates whether the block is present in that cache. If the presence bit is one for a particular cache, that means that we think that cache has a copy of the block. If the presence bit is zero, that means that we know for sure that that cache does not have the block in a state that is not I. So let's say we have one block caches at core zero and one. And let's say this is the directory entry for block B, where this is the dirty bit, and these are the presence bits for cores 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So this is an 8-core system, so we need 8 bits to represent presence of the block in the caches. Initially, the block is not dirty and is not present in any of the caches. Let's say that core 0 reads from the block B. The block is not in its cache, so it's treated like it's in the invalid state. We put the read request out. Normally, this read request will be put out on the bus, and because no other cache has this, the memory would respond. But now we don't have snooping anymore, so all requests for a block would be sent first to the home slice of the block, and we determine what is the home slice by looking at the address of the block, Different blocks are distributed among different slices so that we get an even load between the slices. So let's say we determine that for block B, this is the slice where we go, and once the request gets there, we look at the directory entry for it. The directory entry says that the block is not anywhere in the system. So now we can get the data from memory and send the data back to the cache zero and we need to tell the cache zero everything that the bus would normally tell it. So we tell it that it has exclusive access because there are no other sharers, and we give it the data. That response gets back to cache zero, and now if it has the exclusive state, it can put the block in that state and put the data for B here. When the directory sends the data to cache zero, it changes the presence bit for that cache to one. Also, we sent the data with exclusive access. If cache zero modifies the data, it doesn't have to notify the directory back, so we also set the dirty bit. The dirty bit here will not cause a writeback. It will cause us to find if a cache needs to do a writeback. So now, why does this work better than a bus? Well, because while cache zero was doing this with this directory slice, cache one could have done something like that for another block, with another directory slice completely independently. However, if cache one tried to write to B at about the same time when read B was occurring, we would send a write request to the same directory entry. And now, between these two messages, the directory controller needs to select one. In this case, it chose read request first, so officially, this read happened before this write. So the core here gets to read the block B, and only then the write gets processed by the directory. So when this write request arrives here, again, this write request would be placed on the bus, seen by this cache. As a result, this cache would invalidate, and we will get the block in the modified state. With the directory, we send the request to the directory controller. It sees that the block is present and possibly dirty in the, in this case, cache zero. So what now happens is the directory forwards the write request for B to the caches that are present. In this case, it forwards it to cache zero. Cache zero now sees this request just as if it was snooped from the bus. And because it has the data in the exclusive state, it can choose to respond with the data, or it may just keep quiet and confirm the invalidation. So what happens here is once the write request has been given to this cache, we need to send the acknowledgement at least, if not the data, to the, back to the directory controller that says that we are done invalidating our copy. So at this point, we have invalidated our copy. When the acknowledgement arrives here, the directory controller can change this to zero. If the data didn't arrive, then we can erase the dirty bit and now, because we don't have the data still, we will read the memory and send the data to cache one. 
and because we are acknowledging a write request, we again set the dirty bit, and now the presence vector gets a one for the bit that corresponds to cache one, and now we get to set M here and write to the B here. So as you can see, this is how the caches can do their normal coherence, but now instead of everybody seeing everything, that we need to send requests to the directory, which then sends out the messages that need to be sent only to those caches that actually might have the block. So if a block is shared by only two cores, then we will be only sending a very few messages. In contrast, the bus would force us to basically broadcast to all of the cores. So this also saves a lot of bandwidth because we're using point-to-point -point network links to send just this. Meanwhile, other cores could be doing something like this with another directory entry completely independently over a network.